Today we're going to be learning the very basics of Thunkable. We're going to learn how to add text boxes, labels to screens, and how to make buttons do different things like make things disappear or text appear in labels. Here we go. All right, so I've already created a Thunkable account and I'm logged in. Uh, today we're going to learn a little bit about how to use Thunkable and we're going to create our very first program. So once I'm logged in, I can go ahead and hit the start building button here. If I've already created a project before, there's usually a create button over here. So I'll just call this my first project. And then it asks you to put it under a category. And so there's all sorts of categories, but let's put it under just testing. And then we're going to uh, try out the drag and drop interface by checking this box and say create. So here we go. In the center, we see our main screen. That's uh, This is the mock-up of what would be on our phone. Um, I'm just going to say maybe later to this tutorial. Um, on the left here, we have different um, components of our user interface. And, and so right now, we're looking in the design view. To program, we click on the blocks view. And then much like Scratch, you can see the different blocks that we use to program. This is our main screen and it's called screen one. You can see over here, as we have um, clicked on things in our user interface, we can see what they're called and what their properties are over here on the right hand side. So for example, if we wanted to change the background color of screen one, we could go ahead and click in here and choose a color. Yellowy. I'm gonna make it sort of a light bluish color. There we go. All right. So. Let's create something. The first thing we're going to add is a label. A label is just a box where text can appear. And I'm just going to pick it up from the left, drag it in. I can reposition it on the screen wherever I'd like. Uh, now that it is the item I've clicked, you can see its name over here in the properties area is label one. The text that appears is, is just label. So I could write anything I wanted in there. And as I change it, it updates here in my user interface. I can change the font size. I can change the font. And again, I can change, you know, colors, alignment of the text. So let's say I wanted it centered. And if I wanted to, I could drag this so that it fills the screen and then my text appears right in the center. Um, you know, font style, font weight, all sorts of properties that you might want to change with regards to the text. So, that's a, te that's a label. The next thing we're going to look at is a text input. That's where someone can type something. So here's our type here text box. I'm going to make it about the same size as our label, more or less. And again, you'll notice as I click from one item to the other, it changes the properties over here on the side. You'll also see it's building up uh, uh, information with here's my screen one and within screen one I have a text input and I have a label it creates a list over here of the components that are part of my screen. Uh, so here it says type here I'm going to go ahead and uh, leave all this the same. The next thing we're going to do is add a button. I'll drop that here and you'll notice there are some handy guides that pop up so that purple line is just indicating it's centered to the label and the text. So I'll leave that there, and it's called button. So I've got three components you can see, button one, text input one, and label one, and they're all part of screen one. Now let's say I want to program this to do something. I can go over here to blocks, click on my blocks area, and I can start dragging things in. If I want to find uh, information, components about each of the components I've added to screen one, I can click to see blocks that are uh, specifically about that item. So for example, button one has some code. Oops. And for example, I can have an action, an event, when button one is clicked, I want it to do something, or when button one is long clicked, or when it touches down, or when it touches up. And it has all sorts of things we can change too. We can change the text that appears there. We can get the text that appears there and put it somewhere else. We can change font size. There are a whole bunch of things that are specific to that button. We're going to use the when button one, button one clicked 
piece of code and I'm going to drop it here. So this is an event and the event is when you're pushing the button. So what do we want to happen? Let's look back at our design. Let's make it so that whenever our user types something in this box, it changes the label here based on what we click. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to my blocks. So how do we do that? Well, we want to take whatever is in text input one and put it into label one. So let's have a look to see what blocks we have here. Let's see, we can set label one's text to something. So let's grab that and put it here for a moment. And you can see I can type whatever I want here. So I'll just type, how are you in this box? Let's go back to design for a second. And we can preview this by pushing the web preview button here at the top to see how it works. I'll go ahead and push that. And I'll go ahead and see what can I type in here. I can type anything I want in here. Dogs. I can push my button. And what happens? It changes my label to how are you. If I keep pushing that button, and if I keep changing this, nothing happens. What we want to eventually get to is so that when I push this button, it changes my label to whatever it is I've typed in this box. So let's go back to our blocks and figure out how to do that. Um, I'm going to go back to design and go back to web preview and then go to blocks. There we go. All right, so right now it changes our uh, label one's text to how are you. What we want it to do instead though is get whatever has been typed in our text input and change our label's text to match. So if I go into text input, we can see it has text input one's hint, no, text input one's text, that's what we want. So I'll grab that, connect it here. Perfect. So now when button one is clicked, set label one's text to text input one's text. You can almost read it like a sentence. Let's go back to design. Let's go ahead and preview. Let's type something in the box and push our button. And you can see it changes our label. I can type something different. and push my button again, and it changes my label again. Okay, let's try using some of this logic, and we're gonna try something slightly different. Okay, we're gonna go back to uh, designing, and uh, back to editing. I'll go ahead and click that button there. All right, there are other elements that we have here on our screen, so let's go ahead and grab an image. I'll drag that in here. And there are different things we can do uh, to create an image. If I go ahead and click here, it says no file source. And there are a couple different options here. I can upload a photo from my computer or I could type in a URL of an image that is on the internet. Let's upload a file. I'll go to my desktop and let's just upload this file. Now this sometimes can take a little bit of time, but for me it was fairly quick. Um, and I'm going to just change its properties here, stretch it out, put that in the middle. And we're going to add another button below that. So here's our goal this time. This time we are going to make it so that when we click our button, our image disappears. So how do we do that? Um, a lot of, there's a lot of similarities to what we did before, but some changes as well. So you can see now uh, under our screen, we have um, button two. That's this button, our new button here. And we've got an image as well. And when I click either of those, you can see their properties there. Let's go ahead and see what different actions we have under image. So I'm going to go into blocks. That's where I do my coding. I'm going to look under image and you can see we can do all sorts of things. We can change the picture that is appearing. We can find information about the picture. Oops, I didn't mean to drag that there. Let's throw that in the garbage for now. But we can also change properties about it as well. For example, we can make it visible or invisible with this. that in the 
garbage as well for now. Here we can say set image to visible to true or false. So true would mean that it is visible and false would mean that it's not visible. So I'm going to just drag this block over here for a minute. Okay. Back to our design. Here's button two. So we want to push this button and have this disappear. So let's go ahead and click on button and in the text here, we'll change that from saying button to disappear. Now it doesn't fit anymore, so I'll stretch that out. All right, let's go back to code. So I'll go to my blocks, button two. So when we push button two, button two is clicked, what do we want to happen? Well, for now, we want to set image one's visibility to false. We'll click that in there. Let's give it a try. I can go ahead and push web preview, disappear, and it disappears. But what if we wanted it to toggle or disappear and reappear when we push this button? I'm gonna go back to editing. We're gonna need to track some stuff and do some checking. I'm gonna pull this out for a moment and drag it over here. I'm gonna duplicate it by right clicking on it. And I know at, sometimes we're gonna want it to be, visibility to be true and sometimes false. So I've got those two different conditions set up there. All right, we need a variable. Just like when programming in other computer programming languages, sometimes you need to track some information and remember it. So we're gonna go click on variables and I'm going to initialize an app variable. Um, initialize app variable. And I want it to, and we have to give it a name, so let's call it visible. And we need to set it to some value. So I'm gonna go into variables. Actually, um, am I? Let's see, I wanna go under logic. We want it to either be true or false. So let's start by having it equal true. So we have a variable and it's either true or false. That's a Boolean variable. So we need to do a check under control. When we click our image, we wanna see, well, is it visible currently? And if it is, we wanna set it to invisible. So the way we can do that check is um, whenever we do an if statement, it's checking if something is true or false and our variable is true or false. So we might say, you know, if our variable equals two, then do something. And that's checking to see if the variable is, is equal to two before it does something. But this time we just need to check, hey, is it true? So I can go under variables and just grab this and say, is variable, is app variable visible? And if that's true, then we want to set our um, variable visible to false. We wanna basically make it the opposite. So set variable visible to, I'm just gonna go back into logic and grab a false. And similarly, if it's already false, we want to set it to true. So we'll go to variables and say, set variable visible to, go back to logic, grab true. And our last step is we want to set image. I'm going to grab this, put it down here. So after we've done our checking, instead of ch setting it to true or false, we'll set it to the value of our variable, which is set to true or false up here. So let's read this through. How does this work? Well, when our app starts, it creates a variable. It's called visible and it sets it to true. Then it checks when the button, when button two is pushed, that's our button that's labeled disappear. If app variable visible, so if it's true, it sets its the app variable visible to false and then it sets image one visible to whatever app variable visible is, which is currently false. Similarly, when it comes through, it checks is app variable visible true? Nope, 
So then it goes down to here. It does the s. So this is an if do else check, and it says set app variable visible to true. Then it sets app image, sorry, sets image one visible to whatever we set our variable to. All right, let's test the code to see if it works. I'm going to go back to design. I'm going to go back to web preview, and let's push it. It disappears just like it did before. When we click it again, it reappears. Every time I click, the image disappears or reappears. As an extra challenge, what if we could change the text in this button to make sense, to say disappear or reappear based on what's happening? So now it should say reappear. If I go back in my blocks, I can go into button two, whoops, back to editing. Go back into button two, and you can see there are different um, things here. So I can set button two's text to something. You could use that code in your if statement to change the name on the button for both of these cases. To say appear or disappear based on what you need. Give it a try as an extra challenge.